Welcome back to another Raider Roundup. From the Broadcasting Studios at Highland Park Middle School, welcome to the Raider Roundup. Welcome Raiders to another exciting edition of the Raider Roundup. I am your principal, Dr. Hunt, and today we are here with Ms. Riddell. Ms. Riddell is our instructional coach here at the middle school, and as an instructional coach, she works with teachers to improve the quality of their lessons and the quality of students' education. She serves as a mentor and role model, helping teachers stay fresh and use the latest techniques and technologies in their classrooms. Ms. Riddell, can you share a bit about your background and what led you to become an instructional coach? Yeah, absolutely. So I have been teaching for, this is my 20th year, um, I started in Massachusetts where I taught for several years and then I moved down here to Texas and here I was a Texas history teacher until I started working as an instructional coach in 2020, which was a fun year to start instructional coaching. Okay, thank you. So what is a typical day like for you? Could you kind of walk us through some of the key activities and strategies you use to support teachers and students in their learning and development? Yeah, if there's one thing I've learned about this job, it is different every single day. Because really what I'm doing is just being responsive to what the teachers and the students need. So on any given day, I could be in teacher team meetings, we could be talking about what the teachers are going to teach, we could be talking about instructional strategies that they want to work on, or I could be helping them working with students who just need a little bit more support. I could be helping with small groups or meeting with a student who needs to get caught up on work because they were absent. Whatever the need is, a lot of times I'll be filling it and working with just helping them support their instructional needs. Um, how do you support teachers in their own professional development and growth and can you provide some examples of specific strategies or techniques you use to help teachers improve their instructional practices? Yeah, well, here's the thing, like, our teachers are so good at what they do. I just want to start by saying that. Um, and a lot of times, they know what they want to do, they just have so many ideas in their mind that they need a little bit of a, a person to bounce ideas off of. So I might do a coaching conversation with them where we just talk about, what do you want to do? What sounds like a good plan? What would work best for the students? And a lot of times that will just help them funnel down their own ideas. Um, I might work with them in class to model an instructional strategy that they want to practice in class. And I might model it for them and then they'll go and they'll duplicate what I just did and see how it works with the kids. There's lots of different strategies that I could use. Um, sometimes I work with the teams and we look at data and we take a look at how the students are doing in certain areas and if we could help them improve in other areas. So those are just a few of the strategies. Okay. How do you collaborate with teachers to enhance students' uh, learning experiences? Yeah, so a lot of it is similar to what I was just saying. I will, most often the strategy I use is I work with teachers to go in and co-teach with them. And so I'll go into a class, maybe we'll do parallel teaching where they'll teach one group and I'll teach another group. It might be that we are, um, we've identified a certain piece of data that they want to work on with the students. So for example, they might have struggled with angle relationships in math. And so we'll be looking at different ways to reteach that to the students. Um, really, it's what the teachers need and how they need me to support them. And then I just come and help find the instructional strategy that would help support them in that moment. How do you stay current with educational trends and research to better support teachers and students? Yeah, so I'm really lucky. We have a fabulous instructional coaching group here um, at uh, Highland Park ISD. We meet every, or just about every Friday where we talk about instructional strategies. Um, we learn new strategies from our leader, Amy Wood. She's fabulous. And the whole team is constantly learning through different journals, different reading, ASAD is one, um, or just any kind of educational journals to kind of keep up to date on new practices. Can you share any success stories or examples of how your coaching has positively impacted teacher efficacy and positive student learning outcomes? Yeah, really at the end of the day, instructional coaching should always trickle down to student achievement, right? So I think when we look at data, there was one group I was working with and they wanted to see how small group reteaching was going to help student achievement. So I worked with that entire team, we talked about different practices they could do, and we did a pre-test and a post-test, and by the end of the post-test, we saw that 87% of the students had reached mastery in that topic, and they were thrilled. So that's a very specific example of how we kind of track student growth and to see mastery coming out of that. 
That's just one of many stories like that. Um, but we are always working to see if the student achievement will improve. And we've seen that campus-wide. We've seen amazing scores on map growth and achievement, and we've seen growth in STAR. And so those are things that we're really proud of for all the work that the teachers are putting in. That's outstanding. Uh, what do you enjoy most about being part of uh, the HPMS school community? Yeah. I love working here. Like I said, we have a great, uh, great team of teachers. We're all dedicated towards helping the students. Um, to me, this feels like a family. We support each other. Mm -hmm. We help out when we need each other. Um, I, many people know I left and came back here. Mm -hmm. So this is a place that I love to work at, and um, I'm very privileged to be able to work in this community. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for being here. And we're really, you know, it's, a, it's really great to have you as part of our team because, our, like you said, our teachers do such a good job, and they deserve to have someone to, work with them and help them and support them and you do that so well and also uh, I know that you help our students so much so um, Raiders students if you know if you need help uh, with anything at all teachers Mr. Dell's here as a resource for you so reach out and she'll be uh, willing to set something up for you or provide whatever support you need uh, and again thank you for being here with us thank you and uh, we are now going to go over to our teacher feature with our very own Miss McCombs. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. And go, go Raiders. Raiders! Now for the teacher feature. Oh. Yeah. Oh, we're also yeah. in the Yeah. You had it perfectly. Great job. My name is April McCombs. I teach eighth grade math all five classes of eighth grade math. This is first period eighth grade math class. And then the distance between the bases. Nope, nope, put your calculator down. Right here we're gonna copy the formula first. So we're copying the formula for lateral surface area. In eighth grade math, we learn mostly it's pre-algebra. So we do equations, we do some geometry, we practice with a lot of regular numbers. There's some financial literacy with interest. Today is surface area where geometry. Um, next will be volume, and then we get to finish with transformations. It represent half like that. Did it show us half? No, so we have to assume that that was all the way across. And what would we need to do to find the radius? Very good, everybody, divide it by two. My favorite thing to teach is equations, by far. Equations help you solve all the problems. If you can set up and solve an equation and manipulate them, you can find missing values. You can do geometry. It'll help you in algebra next year. Now, here's where Big B got confusing. Big B is one half BH. Why are we gonna find big B by multiplying one half times base times height? Because that's the area of a triangle. Because that's the area of a triangle. I graduated from Baylor and I've been teaching 11 years now. This is my 11th year. So I actually went straight from college to Thailand for two years and I taught ESL to a Thai, at a Thai school. Um, I was not the world's best English teacher, so I switched to math and I've been teaching middle school math ever since. I've been in Highland Park for seven years. This is my seventh year, my third year in eighth grade. I did sixth grade for a long time. Okay, any questions about 10.2? I would love for you to ask. We have a quiz on Thursday. We are struggling with surface area. In my opinion, it's one of the hardest things because there's a lot going on. Luckily, today's a little bit easier, but I need you to ask. My favorite thing about teaching are the kids. It's the only reason I show up every day, to try to help make math a little less terrible, school a little bit more valuable. But the kids, they're the best part by far. If you take a cylinder, And you have the lateral face is the face around, right? And you lay it out flat, what shape would it make? A rectangle. A rectangle, very good. And while sixth grade is wonderful, eighth grade is super fun. We get to do exciting things. We get to chat with the kids a little bit more. It's always measured in units squared. Why is it always measured in units squared? Because it's surface area, thank you. The teachers of eighth grade are the best. Um, and in general, we are so lucky to be in Highland Park, go Raiders!